In this video, I'm going to show any beginner how to get a shot of the Auroras their first time with the equipment you already own in a way you don't have to Photoshop your images. Hello, my name is Chris Attrell. I have taught night photography to over 6,000 students all across Western Canada. And I've been shooting the Auroras for 10 years. Back in the early days, the equipment wasn't nearly as good, there was no apps to tell you when the Auroras were coming out, and there wasn't very much instruction on how to shoot the Auroras. This video is based on what I wish I would have known in 2010 when I first got started. To get started, all you need is your camera with the lens, a tripod, and you should probably bring a flashlight. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be shooting with an entry level Canon M50 with the kit lens that came with it. Let's go over camera settings first. You're going to have to shoot this in manual mode, so on your mode dial, switch that to M. Here, we're going to set ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. The first value we're going to change is our shutter speed. We want to change this to 20 seconds. So when you spin your command dial, you'll notice some values change. Those are your shutter speeds. When you spin the wheel to the point where it says one inch, that means one second. So 20 inches is 20 seconds. The next value we want to change is our aperture. We want to get to a very wide aperture to let the most light into your camera. You may notice some values on your camera that look like this. Those are called f-stops. The lower the f-stop value, the wider the aperture. What this does, it opens the iris in your lens to the widest amount possible, so your images are brighter. When you change these values, you're going to notice that the iris in your camera will open up wide. For dark photography, you want that wide aperture. And if you make sure your lens is wide open, first of all, you're going to get more sky, and you'll get the wider aperture values. Let's set your f-stop value to 3.5. Some cameras have two command dials. One is for shutter speed, the other is for aperture. If your camera only has one command dial, you're going to have to hold down the exposure compensation button and then spin your command dial at the same time. Now you should see those f-stop values changing. With the lens wide open, you should be able to get down to 3.5. And the last value we're going to change is ISO settings. We want to change this to 1600. This is a good starting point. Most cameras have a button that says ISO. Once you press it, you can change your ISO setting. For some Sonys and Fujis, you're going to have to hit the function button. It'll just say FN. Once you press that button, there's a submenu. One of them will be ISO settings. For Nikons, you're going to have to go into Menu, Shooting Menu, and then ISO Sensitivity Settings. Change this to 1600 and make sure you turn Auto ISO to Off. And don't forget to put those values back when you're done at the end of the night. Great, now you got your camera set for your first shot. You're at 20 seconds, an aperture value of 3.5, at 1600 ISO. You don't need to do any other settings like white balance or metering. Just stick to the basics and you'll be successful. There will be some adjustments you may have to make because there's variables when you're shooting the auroras like how bright the auroras are, how bright the moon is, and how good of a lens you have. Some auroras are very dim, so just shoot that in 20 seconds. You may even have to increase the 30. Some auroras are very bright you should be able to shoot 20 seconds, no problem. However, the goal is to shoot them between five to 10 seconds. That's gonna take some experience and possibly an upgraded lens. When you shoot beyond 10 seconds, the auroras become a green blob. When you shoot under 10 seconds, you can see the movement and structure in the auroras. However, for beginners, this may be difficult. If both the moon and the auroras are very, very bright, you can probably get away with shooting 10 seconds. 
if you have a lens with an aperture value that can go to 2.8, then again, you could probably get away shooting 10 seconds. These Tokina wide-angle lenses are one of the more popular lenses on the market for Aurora photography. I put a link to a few of them in the description below. Before you start upgrading lenses, I always recommend to my students to outgrow your equipment first. This way you're not just spending a lot of money on equipment you'll never use. And finally, if you're shooting a 20 second exposure at an aperture value 3.5 and 1600 ISO, and your pictures still look too dark, simply increase the ISO to 3200. That will double the brightness. If it's still too dark, change your ISO value to 6400. It will double it yet again. I prefer using ISO to adjust the brightness and darkness on my images when I'm shooting the auroras to keep my 10 second goal. So in summary, for your first shot, 20 seconds, aperture 3.5, 1600 ISO, and you may start doubling the ISO values up to 6400. Once you have experience or upgraded your lens, you want to make the goal to shoot these in 10 seconds or less. That's what a pro would do, but a pro usually has lots of experience and a really good lens and a really fancy camera. You're also going to have to learn to manually focus in the dark. This is something you shouldn't learn in the field. I made a 10 minute video teaching any beginner three different methods for manually focusing in the dark or low light situation. And here are some tips for beginners. You don't have to do your camera settings in the field. Do your camera settings at home or in your car so all you have to do is put your camera on a tripod and your settings are already there. Beginners have a hard time finding the settings when it's cold, windy, mosquitoes, and creepy sounds everywhere. There are some apps and websites that will predict when the auroras are going to come out. I put a link to a few of them in the description below. However, they're just guidelines, they're not perfect. Sometimes it can say there's going to be bright auroras tonight and there isn't any. At the same time, some of the best auroras I've ever seen in my life happen on nights when the apps did not even predict them. You should also check your weather forecast to make sure it's not going to be cloudy at night. And as you probably know, the auroras are in the northern sky when you live in the northern hemisphere. The further north you go, the brighter they are. I live in Shaunavon, Saskatchewan, which is close to the Montana-Saskatchewan border. When you go three hours north of here to Saskatoon, the auroras are three times brighter. The auroras can happen any time of year. My favorite time to shoot them is in spring and fall. One reason is the sun goes down early enough. It's not too cold and the mosquitoes are dead. Right now we're in solar minimum. Aurora activity is very low. Five years ago we were at solar maximum. The auroras seem to come out every other night. There will be increased aurora activity over the next few years. I also like to scout potential shooting locations during the day before I go out at night. I try to look for a really good foreground subject. That can simply be creepy trees, a reflection off a lake, or a church. If you inspect your places during the day, you're going to make sure there's no surprises and that you get permission and you can find these cool foreground subjects. The auroras that you can see with the naked eye is going to be amplified when you take a 20 second exposure of the auroras. So even if you have really dim ones, you will see it pretty good in your picture. And when you're done at the end of the night, don't forget to put your camera settings back to where they were before. You don't want to have a 1600 ISO for daytime shots. You want to make sure your lens is back to autofocus. I also made a 10 minute video for general night photography for beginners. There's further tips and tricks in there to help you maximize your experience. So let's check out some pictures. Here is some pictures with the entry level Canon M50. It did a great job and look at that. The Neowise Comet is in there. You don't need expensive equipment to shoot the Auroras. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description below. I will respond. And if you get a really nice Aurora picture and you want me to see it, tag me on Instagram when you post it. And here is a tip from my wife. 
When you're shooting the auroras, sometimes you have moments notice before you have to pack up and get out the door. So make a checklist. That way you won't forget stuff like lenses, batteries. This fall, I'm also going to be posting some videos on how I edit the Northern Lights. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really hope you like this video. Good luck with your Aurora photography.